so we're gonna let's keep things moving and we're gonna transition to our traditional format and I'm going to cover Neil Young's Rust Never Sleep in the opening montage you heard out of the blue <laughs> out of the blue. <laughs> you heard my You my, are a mess, my friend. I am. You Too heard much- my my hey hey out of the blue. And now you're gonna hear Powder Finger for a while. Yeah. Um, Josh, you need some numbers here, buddy. Oh yeah. So Rust Never Sleeps uh, by Neil Young and Crazy Horse ranks technically right now comes in at number one hundred and one in the nineteen seventies. Oh, okay. Um which I think we actually did end up covering. I think we're ending up covering 101 albums, the top 101. So that yes. that, that tracks. Mm-hmm. Um, number nine in 1979, number 401 of all time. It's um, Neil Young's, well, it depends, right? On Best Ever Album, Neil Young's uh, fifth highest album on Best Ever Albums. But if you want to call it, count this as Neil Young and Crazy Horse, it's their second highest on best ever albums because they do delineate between the two um this also made rolling stones list coming in at number 296 all right so we last talked about neil young on episode 23 with uh when we discussed on the beach and once again we see how see how prolific neil young is between 1975's tonight the tonight's the night which we talked about on a cold listen and this album um at least almost exactly four years apart, he put out four albums. Um, Crazy Horse had been sort of in limbo at this time since Danny Witten's death in 1975. Some of the members um, had played on 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 the beach and Tonight's the Night, but they didn't use the name Crazy Horse at that time. And in late 1974. Billy Talbot's friend, Billy Talbot of Crazy Horse, his friend Frank Pancho San Pedro was uh, Frank, quote unquote, Pancho San Pedro. Oh, I was about to say, his name's not Frank Pancho (laughs) San Pedro. It would be amazing. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, he was brought in on rhythm guitar, and that was enough to bring the chemistry back um, and the feeling back to Crazy Horse. And then uh, they were jamming with Neil Young, and they had the... uh, the uh, desire to the spark they needed to bring a crazy horse in on, on recording this album, bring them back, resurrect them in, in a sense. Um, it also allowed Neil Young to finish powder finger actually jamming with them. Um, and so the album after tonight's the night was uh, on the beach and or not on the beach was Zuma and crazy horse um, joined them on that. And, and then in 1976, Young briefly reunited with Stephen Stills on the next huh. album, Long May You Run, which is credited technically as the Stills Young Band. And uh, they went on tour for that, but it ended midway through due to another falling out that they had. And I don't know why these guys are gotten for punishment. I know. To just keep, you know, <laughs> I guess. They make money, I guess, right? I mean, they, they, I don't people, know. Like, people like the combinations. Or the, the creative spark, I guess kind of overrides common sense i don't know i'm not an artist who knows um (laughs) and then uh also in 76 that you might have heard on thanksgiving day of that year neil young performed in the last waltz concert the final performance of the band along with many other people that we've talked about (laughs) including the band uh, bob dylan Joni mitchell and and others and uh famous for neil young having a coke bubble in his nose at that time and Scorsese, Martin Scorsese, who directed the film, being uh, aggravated that he had to re-edit around that, or he was resistant to doing that uh, before the release of the film. Neil Young's next album was called American Stars and Bars, which came out in 1977 and featured not only Crazy Horse, but Linda Ronstadt, Emmy Lou Harris, and Neil Young's protege, Nicolette Larson, who you hear singing on the album we're talking about tonight in the track Sail Away. And after that, 1978, his next album, Comes a Time, features all new material and has a sound similar to the Nashville country sound that we heard on on Harvest. So again, once again, showing his his uh, never resting in one type of music and, and kind of going back and forth between you know he's so prolific and a lot of stuff he writes doesn't get released right away and and uh you can see that there <laughs> this is crazy he also started to make a movie uh, during this time called human highway which was a comedy and he was a co-director along with russ tamblin from uh john may know recognized from 
from uh, Twin Peaks and West Side Story, and uh, Dean mm-hmm. Stockwell, who you may recognize from, uh, I don't know. Quantum Leap. Yes, Quantum Leap. Thank you. And Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> uh, yeah, <It's, laughs> thank you. And uh, also Dennis Hopper appears in that film. And then crazily enough, the members of Devo appear in that film as nuclear garbage persons. And they perform Hey, Hey, My, My, Into the Black with Neil Young on the album. Now, the or on the movie. The movie wasn't released until 1982, however, in a small number of theaters, and then it wasn't released until home video in 1996. Damn. Um, You can currently see it on Blu-ray if you are interested, but it's not streaming anywhere, so uh, you'll have to to buy it and support Neil Young that way. And uh, coming up to 1978, Neil Young started the Rust Never Sleeps tour, which was new material. Um, that you've heard on this album and was divided like this album into solo acoustic sets and then an electric set with Crazy Horse. So that division is there again. Acoustic. (laughs) Exactly. The electric set was influenced by the punk rock music going on at the time, um, says Neil. And the album, this is the album that a lot of musicians and people uh, attribute to the precursor to grunge and many artists of the grunge era have said that they were inspired by his distorted guitar sound uh, on this album which you heard he actually released two albums based on this tour the album we're talking about tonight Rust Never Sleeps which was released June 22nd 1979 and the album Live Rust in November of that year which is an actual concert album um, featuring new and old material uh, of his a concert movie was also released called Rust Never Sleeps, um, which was released that year as well. And I have not seen that also. Uh, many of the songs on this album were recorded live. The first three were recorded in San Francisco at the boarding house between May 24th and 28th of 1978. And then Sail Away and Pocahontas were recorded in the studio um, earlier, earlier in the year or at an earlier time. And then Bringing it back to Devo a little bit, at the final performance on the 28th at the boarding house, he performed Hey, Hey, My, My, Into the Black, which is the closing track, the kind of harder grunge track. In the stu- He performed that in a studio with Devo and would later introduce the song to Crazy Horse, so it kind of originated between him and Devo. And during the studio recording, it was actually Mark Mothersbaugh of Devo who added the lyric, Russ... Rust Never Sleeps, and then Neil Young took that in his recording and named named the album after that and incorporated it into, into the song. Um, the electric portion of the sets on this album, which is kind of the back half of the LP, the last three songs, were recorded live in late 78, but overdubs were added later in the studio, and they tried to take out as much of the audience noise as possible, but you can still hear clearly yeah. that there's um, audience cheering and stuff at different times on the album. Uh, I should say that Crazy Horse, since they're credited as on the album, um, you know, in the title, Neil Young, Neil Young and Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse consists of Frank Poncho, Sam Pedro on electric guitar, Billy Talbot on bass, and Ralph Molina on drums. And Rolling Stone voted... Uh, Neil Young Artist of the Year, along with The Who in 1979, and picked Rust Never Sleeps as Album of the Year, and the Village Voices Annual Paz and Jot Poll, which is such an interesting, those are all archived online, and you can read um, Robert Criscow's thoughts on the year as they they were happening. Um, They placed it as the second best album of the year behind Graham Parker and the rumors squeezing sparks, which I actually listened to a while back and it's fun. It's kind of Elvis Costello esque. He's a British guy. And I think the rumors um, may be involved with Elvis Costello so far um, in some way, but so you said that Rolling Stone voted Neil Young and the who the best artists of the year in 1970. What, what were the who doing in 1979? I I don't know. Um, John, (laughs) Uh boy, That's... that was not quite who's last. Um, <laughs> that seems weird. I mean, we were done with the who in like seventy four yeah. or seventy. Wow, we haven't talked about them in a while. I did. Maybe that seems like a la- point. Let me now. While you guys are finishing this up, now I'm that just seems me. like I'm just sorry. That just seems like a misstep with all the stuff we've covered and like how like oh the late seventies are so great and you're going to say that the who is the greatest is the yeah, artist of the year. That seems mm-hmm. strange to me. Maybe they went on tour or something. Who knows? Yeah. 
Did they name an album? Who knows? They should have. That's, um, <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Oh, <laughs> so many possibilities. Mm. Uh, it looks like Quadrophenia came out in 79. Or music for the, the movie, soundtrack. The movie yeah. Quadrophenia came Maybe out. that put them back in the context. So it's, uh, it's the album was Who Are You, which is a big stadium rock album. So, okay. okay. Um, which, yeah. I Also, Keith Moon died in 1979. Hmm. Or actually, oh. no, excuse me. He died in September 7th, 1978. I apologize. So actually, um, the tour after this and Quadrophenia and sort of all that stuff was all post Neil okay. Young. Or Neil Young, uh, Keith Moon, and also there was that who con- the um, you know that like disaster that that uh, tragedy at the Who concert with the Stampede. I think it was in Cincinnati, mm-hmm. maybe um, that was also 1979. So they certainly had an eventful year, but okay. I don't know if it was a creatively artistic year. Yeah, probably definitely enough to keep them in the, the consciousness of the critics. But um, that's all I had actually, and. John, what did you think of Rust Never Sleeps? Yeah, this uh, this was my favorite Neil Young album of all the Neil Young albums we've mm-hmm. covered, and I've liked quite a few of them. But yeah, I mean the the easy things right off the bat, like you mentioned, I, I the the um the second version of My My Hey Hey is mm-hmm. like you can't get more grunge than that. It sounds like a it sounds like the Melvins or Helmet like playing yeah, a, a song, which of course is before those. But it's yeah, yeah it's 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 that sludgy. It, 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 there are a lot of bands. That, yeah, Meat Puppets, Melvins, Helmet, that those type bands that came later. And I of course like that sound. So yep. I love I love the heaviness of it. Um, this is one of my favorite Neil Young albums lyrically, even if sometimes his lyrical choices are interesting, like. Pocahontas, you just go like, where, you know, how did Neil Young get there? You know what I mean? Because it's kind of literal, you know, yeah. like to the point of him saying, I wonder what it'd be like to sleep with Pocahontas so that I could, <laughs> you know, know her pain kind of. And it's like, and Marlon Brando. In, <laughs> yeah, it, it, interesting. And so, like, thematically, he's very interesting because he kind of keeps you on your toes. But um, there's a reason Kurt Cobain's Suicide Note had My My Hey Hey in it, you know, because. The line, you know, better to, to burn out than to fade away is mm-hmm. like, it's, you know, it's it's a classic line, you know, and it, it does describe a certain mindset that that is like getting older or, you know, uh, if you're struggling to find the excitement in things, you know, and, and feel, you know, it's there. Mm-hmm. Um, and Rust Never Sleeps is another great analogy. Um, and they combine both of them together. So I might. Go so yeah, I, I think I, I might go so far as to say that's my favorite Neil Young song. It just encapsulates all the things that I love about Neil. It's great lyrics, it's a great chorus, it the guitar is great. I love the fact there's two different versions of it and they both sound different. So it gives you it's like two different songs, yep. even though it's the same one, which yep. I really appreciate about that. But I just there's really no bad songs on this album. The length is perfect. Um I like the way – the more Neil Young albums go on, the more I feel he gets better and better at couching his unique voice in sort of a sonic palette that doesn't make it kind of overrun things and, and puts it at the exact amount where the uniqueness of Neil Young's voice is a real asset to the work as opposed to sometimes – the sparse arrangements, you know, he can kind of, and I know people have different opinions on that, but sometimes mm-hmm. I feel with sparse arrangements, Neil Young can kind of, you know, his voice and, and his delivery can kind of overrun um, a song. But yeah, it's just a reminder also of how enjoyable Neil Young for me is as a guitar player because he's not doing anything like overly complicated on the guitar, but he's just, he's just, gr- you know, grinding and thudding like on yeah. the guitar at, at, at points in this album, which I love. And yeah, I, I can't mention enough how the distortion on the guitar is. There's been bits and pieces where you've heard it in Neil Young's albums. It's always yeah. to some degree there, but this one, it's the, it's the overriding theme, um, certainly on the guitar parts, uh, that sound. Um, and it's just a, it's a really tight band behind him as well, Crazy Horse. They sound great, which is interesting because they've had so many 
it's tumultuous, you know, in terms of people yeah. coming in and coming out. But they, they sound like a tight band and they sound like a tight touring band as well. So, yeah, strong recommend for this. I really enjoyed this album. Um, and, and I would I don't even think I would hedge my bet on this. I think this is my favorite Neil Young album that we've covered, which in turn, I think, makes it my favorite Neil Young album, period. All right. Yeah, well, you guys know how I feel about Neil Young, which I'm yeah. very much a, a huge fan. And um, I didn't know this album, although I knew a number of the songs on it. I do have um, Live Rust, so um, a number mm. of the songs that are on this also made it onto Live Rust, including the the My My Hey Hey's and the Hey Hey My My's. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, like, I like the setup of this, that it's got the acoustic side on side A and then the then the electric side on side B. Yep. Um I I I know that this is you you know you're kind of <clears throat> mentioning how this is known for the uh <clears throat> the godfather of grunge kind of moniker that he that he that he mm. got. Um I I'm I'm a bigger fan of the first side to be honest. I think it's mm. a more consistent side. I and I it's it's it sounds great. The production is great. It's very crisp and clear. I love just the whatever the tone that he's playing with on that elect on that acoustic guitar it's got a little bit of an echoey it's kind of a tinny i don't i, I don't think it's a 12 string guitar that he's playing but it's kind of has a similar feel in some ways to the to a 12 string guitar it's just a very full um very crisp kind of sound mm-hmm. and uh and i just these are all just great examples of how neil young can just do acoustic music so so well um you know, and uh, again, I knew you know Pocahontas is just a is just a is a really pretty song. Uh, you know, Thrasher, I I didn't know that before. I really enjoyed that, uh, and I uh, didn't know Ride My Llama. Although I think he pronounces it Llama to rhyme with whatever he's you know whatever he's rhyming with. So Ride My Llama, Canadian well. too. So yeah, you know, yeah, it kind of could my just llama. be that. Um, and Sail Away is a really pretty song too. So it's just a really, really strong first half of this record that, you know, just shows how good he is at doing those kind of acoustic songs. Um, and then side two is great too. My, um, I, Powder Fingers are great tune. Love that. And I, I agree with everything you said about the, um, the, the, Hey, Hey, My, My, John, the, the, the heavier sound. That's a very, that opening guitar riff is just like, that's turned up to 11 and it's, yes, it's a sludgy kind of like heavy guitar sound um that the downside to me is a little bit within not the whole parts but welfare mothers that kind of chorus is a little i head. don't know <laughs> it does but i but it not it's it's to me it's not a great it's kind of um it's kind of just there it's a little i don't want to say it's annoying but it's not my favorite uh, mm-hmm. type of chorus and it's the same thing with sedan delivery both of those songs kind of have a like sedan delivery's got that repeating like gotta get away dun, 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 and it just over it's and over a great again. song it, lyrically though it really okay. is yeah, yeah but you know how i feel about that so i mean that's mm-hmm. you know but I, with those parts kind of like over and over in my head and i don't think that they are particularly strong musically um, so they kind of it's it's kind of knocked down a tick or two for me on those. Um, the, the you know the other parts of the songs I like like the verses and I do like the sound of the guitar. I think that that's very strong. But that kind of stood out to me as being like a little bit um, to me somewhat toss away songs, unfortunately. And I was kind of wishing that maybe there were other because I know that Neil Young has other you know kind of heavier songs or more distorted songs around this time. Some stuff that he might have done on Live Rust that I would have preferred to have heard on here. Um, but I, 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 I'm not going to sit here and say that, oh man, this album stinks or anything like that far from it. I mean, I think it really showcases his talent, both as, you know, a gentle acoustic singer songwriter, but also like a dude that's not afraid to rock out and plug in and and go heavy. Um, and so, uh, that's one of his, his great talents. Love his voice, love the energy. He's got edge, even the, the acoustic songs, there's edge on those, you know, his voice is kind of just this really distinctive sound. Again, I understand why people wouldn't like it, but I think it works beautifully. I think he's just i think he's just got a real he's a real unique talent and um and just his guitar his head when he does play the electric guitar when he does play guitar solos he does have a very um distinct way of playing it's not crisp and clean it's or polished it's very aggressive and kind of mm-hmm. you know um i don't want to say he's making mistakes but he's not afraid to kind of just like you know take it to another level where a, a probably a less a lesser guitarist might, you know, try to do something similar and it sounds really shitty, but he kind of does it in a way that just, he really pulls it off. So overall, very strong, just kind of wish I, you know, I, 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 it's my own personal thing with those two other songs. It's the choruses, the way they kind of get stuck in your head that it's not my, I I think musically he could have been a little Mm. bit stronger there, but, uh, but overall I, I enjoyed it. 
those songs though this album's about him getting older which is what i love about neil young he like kind mm. of he you you find out where he is in his life and what he's focusing on to yeah. you know whether it be loss or a divorce or stuff and this album's clearly about you know getting older and those songs it's it is weird for me in some ways, Matt, that you put so little focus on lyrics because I, I do – it's weird for me that you can love Neil Young as much as you do while also sort of the lyrics just not computing Register. for you <laughs> because there, it's so much a part of the Neil Young experience for me and what makes me like him so much that it's just – I'm just like, boy, if Matt had the lyrics – like, I can only imagine the heights that Neil Young would get to. I mean, what's he's the, I mean, like oh, this much without the lyrics. Yeah, it, it, well, to me, it's about the sound, right? And maybe in sometimes, I was talking to my brother about this, too, and, I, and he had a, he put it a good way, too. It's not, it's sometimes the lyrics sound good just the way that they, they, the words are put together, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily what's saying, or it's just like, it's like Dylan's always a good example of that. Dylan just puts a string of words together, and it's like, what the hell is that about? Nobody knows, but it sounds cool. But also to me, it's more about the, the, the vocal. I'm listening to the vocals as an instrument. I'm listening to Neil Young's voice as an instrument. And unless there's some horrendous lyric coming out of there, I'm not going to, it's not going to, generally speaking, yeah. I'm not going to gravitate towards it or really yeah. pay attention. Well, I'm not saying you're I wrong. Mean, welfare I'm just mothers, saying it's, yeah, it's welfare unusual. Mothers, yeah, I picked up on that. I mean, he wants to, he's welfare mothers make better lovers. Let's like, you know, and I was like, well, okay, there, that's, that's up, you know, but I did, but I don't know. I didn't really, that's, I'm not paying it. I, I'm not listening to music for that. I'm listening to it for the music. And, uh, you know, if I was more interested in lyrics, I'd be, I don't know, reading more literature or poetry or whatever, you know, so that that's kind of how I look at it. But, mm. um, but I know I'm, I'm also in the minority. I know a lot of other people that look at me like I'm crazy and I just, I don't know what to tell you. It's just how my brain works. So, uh, for better or worse. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I describe his, whatever, the sound that comes to my head when you describe his guitar playing is kind of like earthy. He's just like willing and natural. Mm. He's willing to yeah. just play in a way that feels right to him and, and it, it works for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Um, and that's, you know, I'm preaching to the choir here. I, I love this album too. This is probably my second favorite after everyone knows this is nowhere. And it could be number one. I don't know. There's the, he's been so consistent. I feel like I've been kind of saying the same thing every review. I just really love how he's able to straddle that line between playing acoustic and playing electric in a way that really works for me and that very few artists that we've talked about are able to do. Um, and having the distinct kind of, you know, first side, second side of the album be those things kind of highlights that as well, that, they're both enjoyable. They're both es essential Neil Young or, and essential in, in the uh, essence sort of way, the the essence of Neil Young. And and uh, it, it both works for me uh, on different levels. The If I go with the back half first and the electric stuff, it just is kind of almost shocking how, how that, hey, hey, my, my, into the black sounds. It's... Mm. It's so, it caught me off guard because it just sounds so different right away when you hear the sa the guitar sound. It sounds so 90s for lack of, you know, a better description. And and it, we've said before kind of how his electric guitar sounds different, but this is kind of on another level. And and uh, I, I really enjoyed the rest of the electric parts, but the fact that, like John said, you have two different versions of the same song. He's like covering his own song in some in some way, almost. And they sound so different. It's just kind of a testament to how great he is. And you never heard either one of those before, Josh? I heard the acoustic. I don't think yeah. I've heard the the um, electric version mm -hmm. of that before. And I hadn't heard this album before either. The, you know who that song's about, Josh? Uh, Elvis. See, I do know this. No, yeah. <laughs> John, John you know what it's you know who it's about, right? Uh, but my my hey hey, yeah. Uh, isn't it about Johnny Rotten from the yeah. Sex Pistols? Yeah, and he actually yeah. says it in there. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. About, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's about like Elvis too. To Johnny Rotten. He makes yeah. the comparison. Yes, he yeah he compares him to Elvis. Yeah, yeah. so you're mm -hmm. both right. Yeah, and and that's the other thing too is sometimes I feel like these artists are kind of in their own bubbles, but name checking somebody like Johnny Rotten who. The Sex Pistols, you know, is kind of and punk itself is such a young sound at that time. But the fact that he is like tapped into it and at least yeah. able to make the comparison between Elvis and Johnny Rotten is so is so interesting to me. Um, and the fact that Johnny Rotten later kind of 
covers a Neil Young song on on a BBC or a British radio show or something. So just kind of that linking between decades and generations, you know, because yeah. he's still young at this time, but he's not young like Johnny Rotten's young, who's what in his early twenties, I think, right. probably. Well, well I. You know, Go ahead, Matt. I'll I was just going to say Neil Young's like he's he's a child of the '60s, right? And right. maybe was, and remember, and he started off with Rick James back in the day when you were like, "How was that ever a thing?" You know, that's how old they go back, and or how long they go back. And I think this also stands out to me because Neil Young's always lumped in with Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and he he's yes. way surpassed them with stuff like this. I mean, it's it's like the stuff that he was doing in the late '70s and even mid seventies really is the stuff. I mean, what, what the hell are Crosby stills and Nash doing? They're still kind of like probably lamenting the, uh, the loss right. of the sixties and all that stuff. So he, he rose above that and kind of transcended that. And, um, and, you know, probably, uh, was more appealing to younger listeners as a result, you know? Yeah. I always think back to, I remember right before he died, John Lennon was really pissed off about this song. And he said he hated the idea of like better to burn out than fade away because he likes, people that stay around and just sort of mm. survive and, you know, are able to be themselves. And it, it kind of always gave me an idea of like what Lennon, I think would have been like older. I think he mm. would have been a lot like Paul McCartney, to be quite yeah. honest. Um, and Neil, Neil Young kind of responded to the comments. I think people did it. And he kind of, he said, you know, I remember reading it. It's, I'm reading it now as I'm here. He's like, the rock and roll spirit is not survival. Of course, the people who play rock and roll should survive. But the essence of rock and roll spirit to me is that it's better to burn out really bright than to sort of decay off into infinity. Hmm. Even though if you look at it in a mature way, you think, well, yes, you should decay off into infinity and keep going. But rock and roll shouldn't look that far ahead. Rock and roll is right now, and it's about energy. man. And can you think of anything that yeah. more describes... Neil Young, that's one of he, why he's one of the few cool old artists, because instead of like trying to bring the narrative to him and celebrating like fading, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. he says, no, you know, really rock and roll. <laughs> I'm not saying go die, but like kind of you're not really doing it right if you don't have a certain energy to it. And, uh, you know, yeah. I have to admit I'm in the the uh, I don't think we should celebrate those that are. It's so funny that we're doing Joy Division on this episode, too. Yeah. But, yes. yeah. <laughs> but um, it's, uh, I don't know if we should celebrate those that die early, you know what I mean, in that way. But I also understand the sentiment of, you know, there's a vibrancy that when you're, you're doing it at 50-60 and you're playing the hits, yeah. I think that type of stuff just appalls Neil Young, and I can understand yeah. it from my personality. Yeah. Well, and if you, and if you look to it as, at his discography, I mean, he's just, he t continually does albums and sometimes mm -hmm. he'll do something like a, like an, a full blown acoustic album. Like he's got this album silver and gold that was done like in 2000. That's super, you know, chill. And then he does like something like, you know, mirror ball or Greendale or like living in war. You know, he does, you know, he gets a little heavy handed. Like he gets, he does get very, a little overly political sometimes, but he does, he, he just does what he, you know, feels like doing and he'll, and he, you know, he doesn't really, he's not really reinventing the wheel or anything like that, but he's, his energy and his passion is always there. I saw him once, you know, went during the Greendale concert and uh, tour. And that's, I don't know if you guys know that album. It's like, that's a concert. That's like a story. It's like its own mm -hmm. rock opera kind of thing. It's, it's okay. As an album, I would have rather seen him play more of the hits or just more of an eclectic version of things rather than just that album. But he, his performance was awesome. Like his, his, his dude, it's just like shredding on the guitar and like, he's, he's something special. So, uh, yeah, I, I just, I mad respect for him overall. It's, he's just, he, he's a really unique talent. Yeah, he's able to, I mean, it gets to that fact that there's always like a danger element yeah. to to being in a rock and roll lifestyle and, and living that mindset, right? It's like, how far can you live on the edge without going over, essentially? And, you know, many of the artists that he's probably referencing or that we think of that have died too early, you know, kind of went too far or unintentionally obviously most of the time and then um but it's just kind of the well it's the same way as pro wrestling right it's a hard lifestyle and mm -hmm. and uh you kind of have to live that life in order to be one of the best probably or it just has to evolve into something different which kind of rock and wrestling both have you know what i mean they've become a little bit more of a healthy lifestyle for those that are in it. But you could also argue that some of the edge, you know, and that dynacism, right, mm -hmm. has, has, and it's a catch-22 because yep. there's an argument to be made for both. Yep, exactly. So, yeah, it's just a, a, 
I'm glad we ended the the decade on this album it was kind of a nice mm. capstone because he's been there throughout even yeah. into the 60s and then we heard many albums of his throughout the whole decade so it was it was good hearing it 